Welcome back everybody to our course introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to review the physics of the quantum harmonic oscillator, a very famous topic in quantum mechanics and we're going to use that a lot in the context of quantum optics. So we just want to review some of the essential physics of this quantum harmonic oscillator. So let's get started. So the setting we're considering is a particle in a harmonic trap. The particle has kinetic energy p squared over 2m and potential energy 1 half m omega squared x squared. And between the position and momentum operator, we have the standard commutation relation x comma p equals i h bar with the commutator x comma p being x p minus p x. Now you all know the eigenstates of this harmonic oscillator. I've sketched them here for you. Here's the Gaussian ground state wave function. Here's the first excited state, second excited state, third excited state, and so forth. So let's label these with state zero, the ground state, state one, first excited state, second excited state, third excited state, and the nth excited state in my harmonic oscillator. So let's go one step further and now define the so-called ladder operators in this harmonic oscillator. So these are defined through superpositions of the position and momentum operator in the following way. And uh, we're going to see actually in a second what they do. So this is the so-called destruction operator. This is the so-called creation operator. We'll see in a second why they're called like that. And um, you actually see that these are non-emission. Huh? So if you take the emission conjugate, of A, you get A daggers, you don't get the operator back itself. So these are actually not observables. So these are non-emission and therefore are non-observables. But as we'll see, we can form observables out of these uh, ladder operators A and A dagger. So when we have the A and A dagger, of course, we can go back and form the position operator again as a superposition of the ladder operators and the momentum operator as a superposition uh, of the ladder operators as well. In one case, it's the sum of the A dagger A term. And in the momentum case, it's the difference between the A dagger and the A term, which gives us back the position and momentum operators from the ladder operators. So we can either use the position and momentum operators or we can use the ladder operators to kind of express the same physics. So now let's take our ladder operators. We know how they can be expressed in terms of position and momentum operators. And let's put plug into the x squared and p squared terms the expressions for the ladder operators that we wrote down just in the last slide. If you do that, you actually see that the same Hamiltonian that you have here in the p squared and x squared notation, you can write exactly in the same way in this notation here, where you now have the same Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator expressed in terms of the ladder operators a a dagger, a dagger a, with the prefactor h bar omega. Now, again, remember that the commutation relations between a and a dagger are actually a a dagger commutes to one. So a, a dagger minus a dagger a is one. And therefore I can rewrite a, a dagger, a, a dagger as one plus a dagger a. So I just put, put this in here. I re-express my a, a dagger and uh, out I get the expression here, h bar omega a dagger a plus one half. Now this a dagger a operator, that has a very special meaning in quantum mechanics. That's the so-called number operator. It counts the degree of excitation in your harmonic oscillator. So if you apply this number operator n to an eigenstate n of the harmonic oscillator to the nth eigenstate of the harmonic oscillator, it gives you n times the eigenstate, okay? So this is what we call the number operator. It tells you what the degree of excitation is when you apply it to an eigenstate of your harmonic oscillator. So now let's take the Hamiltonian that we have here and actually see what the eigenstates of this Hamiltonian are going to be like. So if you apply h to the eigenstate n, 
now let's use this expression in terms of the number operators. We have h bar omega n plus one half applied to the eigenstate n of my harmonic oscillator. So this is just shorthand notation one half times the identity. So this will just give me h bar omega n applied to the eigenstate n gives me n. One half applied times the identity applied to the eigenstate n just gives me one half. So this is just one half n. And the eigenenergy here, that's of course just my eigenenergy of the nth state, that's en with en being h bar omega n plus one half. So this gives us the energy levels of my quantum harmonic oscillator that we could just derive very easily using this ladder operator formalism. Now, let's look at a few things of these energy separations. So for example, let's calculate the energy separation of the n plus first state relative to the nth state. Well, that's just h bar omega. So the separation between all those energy levels is equidistant and the energy separation is given by h bar omega. And we have in addition a ground state energy, even for the particle being in the ground state E0, we see that we have a ground state energy of h bar omega divided by two. So this is the ground state energy of my quantum harmonic oscillator. Okay, so that tells us the spectrum of my Hamiltonian. We can derive everything in terms of the ladder operators. Let's take a more closer look why we actually call these the ladder operators. So why do we call them destruction and creation operators? Well, they're called destruction and creation operators because when you apply the A operator or the A dagger operator to an eigenstate N, so let's apply A to an eigenstate N of my quantum harmonic oscillator, it gives square root N times n minus 1. So it actually destroys one degree of excitation of my harmonic oscillator. So it destroys degree of excitation of the harmonic oscillator. And if I apply the operator a dagger to an eigenstate n, well that gives me square root of n plus 1 times n plus 1 and you see actually this creates a degree of excitation. So this operator creates a degree of excitation for my harmonic oscillator. And therefore of course these two are called the creation and the annihilation operators of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Finally let me just ask you something about the wave functions about the harmonic oscillator just to refresh your memory Again, so if we look, for example, at this Gaussian ground state wave function and you write down the probability distribution, the probability density for this Gaussian ground state wave function, what is the width of this Gaussian ground state wave function? Do you remember what that width was in terms of the harmonic oscillator frequency and the mass of the particles in my harmonic oscillator? Just to get an idea of the scales involved, actually you might try to just take a macroscopic harmonic oscillator, take your bowl, kitchen bowl, put a marble in it, take the mass and the frequency of that harmonic oscillator and just calculate for yourself how big is actually this Gaussian ground state wave function of such a kind of quantum harmonic oscillator at macroscopic scales. All right, that's everything I wanted to tell you today in reviewing the quantum mechanics of the harmonic oscillator. We introduced the ladder operators in which we can express the Hamiltonian. We have the number operator which counts the degree of excitation in the system. And all of those we're going to use now in the next class to quantize the electromagnetic field in terms of these ladder operators and the number operator. Thanks a lot for watching today and see you in the next class.